Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, thank you for joining us on the program. The book The Charmed Fascinatus by Ellen Southall takes place over periods 105 A.D. to 2020 A.D. The story of a gold piece, a bracelet of exceptional quality that is meant to be worn, not to be worn on a wrist. The charm was formed in a workshop in Diva, now Chester in England in Roman times. The book was inspired by Alan's experiences and tales during his 35 years in sales for a world leader in supply of safety and survival equipment. Traveling to 23 countries, visiting more than 80 cities, he retired in 2005, now spending time with his family members, struggling to earn Italian and piano. The Charmed Fascinatus by Alan Southall, coming to us from the UK, our guest on today's This Week in America. Alan, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. It's nice to be here, Rick. Good to talk to you. It is a really fascinating story, and I want to go back the, and sort of set the groundwork for this. I said the story sort of came out of, of tales as, as you were traveling around doing sales work for a number of years. What did you just start hearing tales and decided this would be a great story to tell? How did this all come about? Well, I suppose it started in the late 70s when I was allowed to, to travel overseas. Uh, my boss was a bit reluctant to let uh, anyone else go. He would prefer to go himself, but I volunteered and I was keen to go. So I was quite young when I started. And as I travel around, as anyone will travel around this little globe of ours, things happen. And so many little uh, events happened and I heard stories. So I used to log these. Uh, of course, I did visit reports after each trip, but I logged in a diary some of the events that I thought were very interesting. And it was when I retired um, in 2005, I decided that I should put some of these to print. And my colleagues at work were, were urging me to do this also because they wouldn't believe some of the stories I had when I came back. <laughs> so, so, and then what's, what inspired to really start the, uh, the book was an event with my then um, uh, girlfriend in Chester, Diva, uh, where we found a bracelet uh, on a pavement. And um, that bracelet... Um, happened to have a faulty clasp as we found later because after she wore it um, when we got back to the car it had disappeared and then that really took me onto my journey to write the story and what a journey i did not realize this is somewhat autobiographical that you actually were, were part of this and, and let's go back and, and lay the groundwork for this without giving away too much i mentioned this goes back a, a number of years 105 AD, yeah. you've got a goldsmith, you've got uh, uh, wealthy, is it, I'll let you say these names because I'm not real good, although I had Latin in high school, that was many years ago. <laughs> Legatus Crassus, am I getting yeah. that even close? The, that, yes, Legatus is the head of a legion. It's a name they give to the, to the chap who runs the, a legion, which is a substantial amount of resource. Um, and uh, Crassus is a name which is very familiar to me because he appeared, that name appeared in the film Spartacus, I believe. So I linked um, the name Crassus to this event. And um, he was the head of the, of the Legion in Diva, which is now Chester. And he was revered by um, uh, everybody because he'd won several battles over his uh, time as a, as a Roman um, centurion then was promoted to head up this most important of outposts, which was probably the most important out, outpost in in the UK, if not Europe, at the time. And um, but he was found out to be not a very nice man. Yeah, in so, real life, he was sort of a scoundrel, wasn't he? A cheat he and a liar, as he's described. He was. <laughs> he was, but he. Not many knew that. Only only three, only two people knew that. The third one was the goldsmith who he asked to make this special bracelet. Found out then he was a cheat and a liar. But um, he came across as a very honorable man, of course. Yeah, he wanted um, the he special. Found out in... Yeah, and talk about that because he wants the special bracelet for his wife. He goes to the goldsmith. Goldsmith, I guess, thinks, okay, I, I, I could do this. This is going to be a nice little job for me, but uh, it doesn't oh, work yes. out that way. It doesn't work out that way, does it? No, no. I mean, 
Crassus was extremely wealthy, so the goldsmith was very pleased that he should be asked to make this special jewel for his wife. And um, so he spent a lot of time and, and an extreme amount of, of his resources. And he was the head jeweler in the empire. You know, he was the most revered jeweler. He, he made the jewels for, you know, everybody who was anybody at the time. So when Crassus approached him, he said, right, I'm going to do something really special. And he made uh, this uh, bracelet with 15 links and then a clasp. Um, but it was only when Crassus cheated on him and refused to pay him all the costs that he decided he'd put some inscriptions on all these links and clasp to to um, get some revenge, if you like, against Crassus. And that's what starts starts the, the story, really. Um, it's a he hopes that these... Yeah, I was just going to say, it's a fascinating story how this unfolds, especially now that I've got the backstory that there's some of your life involved in this. The book is The Charmed Fascinatus by Alan Southall. The book you'll find at uh, bookventure.com, for example, in the bookstore. You'll find it at the usual places where books are sold. And if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you'll be able to uh, link on directly to get information on the book and be able to order the book. So this guy is plotting his revenge. The goldsmith is plotting his, his revenge. We jump up uh, 2005 A.D. and talk about that experience because this, now that I understand this, is sort of based on a real-life experience. A couple walking along and they, they find a bracelet. That's right. I mean, this, this bracelet appears out of nowhere. And the, the gentleman picks it up. And it's, it's obviously very heavy and it's gold. So he has it immediately valued because he finds it just happens to be outside what we call in England a, a pawn shop where people take and take jewellery and have it valued and sell it. So he was about to buy an engagement ring for his girlfriend and, and he, he took it into this shop with his girlfriend and the guy offered him an enormous amount of money with, for it. Um, and that made him think, well, no, it could be worth more. If he's offering that now, I could get a lot more money. Uh, or the internet, for example. So he doesn't sell it there and then. He, he keeps it. And the problem is, by keeping it, he, he lets his girlfriend wear it, not knowing that the clasp is faulty. And they, uh, they go to their little cafe where they go every, every time they visit Chester. And the owner of the cafe happens to be... A, a, a distant uh, relative of the, the actual jeweler um, who made this uh, piece. So he starts talking a tale, the tale of Legatus Crassus. And <laughs> so he suddenly realizes he might be holding something extremely valuable. But by the time they go back to the car, the girlfriend has lost the bracelet because, of course, the clasp is faulty. That's... That's what starts the story. Yes. Uh, the book is, is The and, Charmed uh, Fascinatus, Alan Southall, our, our guest on the program. Talk about writing this story. And you, you've sort of got this concept from, from real life. Going back and uh, this the history that you incorporate in this, in, in the research, you're telling a story. I assume there was some research involved in, in, in taking this back into these times. Yes, I mean, uh, I, I studied uh, Latin as as you did, Rick, but many many years ago. You know, I was I left school at sixteen, so I'm seventy two now. So it was many years, and and I I I liked the the idea of the Roman Empire, and um, I so I, I I looked upon the internet basically to find out more about. Uh, these uh, these legions that were based in Chester, and Chester has a has a very famous city wall surrounding the surrounding the city now, which uh, is probably one of the best examples in in Europe of a Roman built wall. So it's a fascinating place to be, and there are still um, many many uh, artifacts in the museums based there. So I was that's what took me to Chester. And, and I got, I, because I traveled there as well, um, I started investigating a bit more to get a bit more detail about the city. I made up some of the, some of the uh, stories um, to, to, to bring some interest 
um, to the to the 105 AD, and um, so basically, I did a bit of research to get the to get the the facts right, and uh, the, I looked up the the emperor at the time was Flavian. So little things like this uh, just helped me along. Yes. So the internet is a very good aid. Boy, that's for sure. That's a great research tool to be able to put the story together. And it, you've got some some pictures in there as well that give us sort of a better understanding of what it is you're talking about. I like the use of the, the pictures, illustrations in the in the story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I I tried to get the correct or something aligned with the chapter. Yes. Uh, with the picture to start up. So I was able to do that. Um, and these, the, all these images are freely available on the Internet. So I, I, as with the book cover and the, the reverse uh, of the back, um, I, I looked those up and I selected ones which I felt fitted somehow into the stories of each chapter, which I think it works. I think it works. It works very nicely. The book is called The Charmed Fascinatus. Alan Southall, our guest of the program. You'll find the book available at bookventure.com. We go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You can link on and get information on the book. Don't want to give away a whole lot, but that's where the story unfolds. We end up in in 2020, this uh, the bracelet, there's a, quite a journey that uh, that you write about in the book, isn't there? Yes, um, each time the bracelet uh, is is released from a wrist, lady's wrist, it's found again and travels through uh, from 2005 to 2020. And it visits uh, various countries which I'd visited. And some of the events, I actually had uh, experience of some of the events, the aircraft going on fire, for example. I was actually on that aircraft. Um, so little things happened to me, which I thought would bring in some interest into the story. And I had to be quite clever how to have this uh, clasp um, find its way uh, off a wrist and onto another. So that's what I took a little bit of time doing that. But I'm, I think I managed to, to bring it all together and round it off in 2020, which is the big event, of course. Yes, that um, sort of builds that up this... to that. Well, you, yeah. you did such an excellent job of, of blending that together. And now when I realize that these experiences that uh, I'm reading out of the book, this is what Alan went through. This was part of the, uh, the you know, the, the 35 years in sales and traveling around the world. These are things that it paid to keep that notebook, didn't it? Besides the sales record, it, it paid to keep this <laughs> notebook of, of all your activities there. You did such a great job in writing this and building, and you've got the suspense and a little mystery and uh, the, the history in there as well. Are you working on something else now? Are you writing another book? Well, I've I've always kept journals, Rick. I have about six journals, and a lot of those journals are, I did sketches of various places I visited and wrote a little bit of a story about what might have happened there which are not linked with the book, they're different stories. So I'm thinking of, of putting together these, these journals into a, into a book. Uh, the book contains lots of poems which I like, and I'm not sure about copyright, but I, w I would like to repeat some of the poems that I've enjoyed over the years and put them in. And I've also written lots of poetry myself in these journals. So I'm thinking of doing that as a project next. But the one thing which I really want to do, um, um, I was I was I was keen on on music, piano music, uh, as I've said. Um, I'm trying to learn the piano, and there's a Russian composer called Prokofiev, who treated his wife very poorly, and she finished up in the Gulag um, in Russia, um, and he didn't protect her. He went off with another woman while she was there, um, and I've read her life story and I've written a musical if it can be called a musical I've written 12 songs um, related to her life and I'm thinking of what to do with those 12 songs um, to put either to put music to it myself or send it to somebody to put music to so that's another I've got those two projects in mind you are staying quite busy. You, you said retired in 2005. <laughs> Not really. You just shifted your interest a little bit to, uh, to other areas, and now you get to take us along on the ride, and that is a good thing. But a minute or so left in the program. What has this experience been like? This was, you know, your journal starts off with family, friends. They may get a kick out of the storyline. 
now all of a sudden the book is uh, on sale internationally. It's uh, getting rave reviews. It's, it's an excellent story, uh, a story very well told. What's this been like for you, this whole experience of, of the published book? Well, it's it's really amazed me. I, as I said, I've always enjoyed writing. I won a handwriting competition when I was 11, which started me on my journey. And so <laughs> I've always enjoyed writing. <laughs> but um, what I enjoyed about this was having to handwrite because uh, I'm not I'm useless on computers, Rick. I mean, I'm a dinosaur, true dinosaur. So I I then got a, an app on my iPad ages when I went to see the Apple store and they told me, oh, I can I can type this out. And so I enjoyed from handwriting this this project, which took me about six months to then finger one finger typing it was <laughs> an experience I'll never I'll never forget. <laughs> so. So it's, that's that's been part of the enjoyment, you know. <laughs> An amazing story. The story of the story is just as as interesting. The the book we're talking about is the charmed, fascinatus. Alan Southall, our guest on the program, author of the book. Book available at bookventure.com in the bookstore. You'll find it at the other places as well. And go to our website this week in America.us and link on directly to get information on Alan the book. And you can purchase the book. It's a it's a great story. It's a great read. Alan, it's been a real pleasure having you with us on the program today. Loved reading the book. Even more impressed now knowing that, again, there's some autobiographical qualities to the book that I didn't realize. I thought it was all fiction as, I, as I'm reading it. Thank you so much for being with us on the program and sharing the story. Uh, uh, good luck with the other projects. We'll stay in touch. and would love to have you back on the program. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Thank it you. has been our pleasure. Charmed, fascinatus, Alan Southall, the guest. Guest information available at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back after these messages. <laughs> 